Hello, my dear students. Welcome to this video. Today, I am going to revise Part A questions and answers on business research methods. This is video 3. First question. What is research design? Research design means a plan of action. One meaning. Second meaning. Research design means a blueprint. So these are two meanings for the word research design. First one. It is a plan of action. What is plan of action? It involves implementing a set of methods and procedures for collecting the data, measuring the data, and analyzing the data. That is called research design. One meaning. Another meaning. Research design also means a blueprint for collecting, measuring, and analyzing data. So three steps are there. Collecting the data, measuring the data, and analyzing the data. And that is called research design. And it is a blueprint or a plan of action or a overall map. Next question. What are the objectives of research design? Objectives, importance, need, significance, advantages all mean the same. So the first objective, it helps the researcher to undertake the research work smoothly. When the research design is clear, the research work will become very smooth. There will be no problem or difficulty. The first objective. Second objective, very easy to formulate research problem. Third one, it is very easy to formulate research hypothesis. Next advantage, it will save time. Next advantage or objective, it helps the researcher to collect the relevant data or necessary data. And finally, it helps in conducting in-depth study or detailed study of the research problem. So these are the various objectives of research design. Next question. What are the characteristics of research design? There are four characteristics of research design. The first character, namely objectivity. What is objectivity unbiased? Not influenced by external forces. So the researcher is unbiased. That is objectivity. The second one, reliability. What is reliability? It means consistency or repeatability. Third one, validity. It means accuracy or accurate. And the last one, generalizability. What is generalizability? It means general conclusion, general findings, general recommendation. So these are the four characteristics of research design. Objectivity, reliability, validity, and generalizability. Next question. What are the factors influencing research design? Or what are the problems in the research design? What are they? Now, when you speak about the factor or problem, the first one, availability of time. The researcher should have enough time. So the availability of time is the first factor influencing the research design or the research work. So the first factor, availability of time. Second factor, availability of funds or money. Third factor, availability of labor, availability of data, and availability of scientific information. And the last one, magnitude of the problem. So these are the various factors influencing research design. Next question. What are the different types of research design? Research design 
is broadly classified into three types. One is called descriptive research design. The second one is exploratory research design. And the third one, experimental research design. So these are the three types of research design. Descriptive research design. It describes the characteristics of the population or a situation. It's descriptive research design is meant for survey or observation technique. So descriptive research design is best suitable for marketing research because it gives answer for only one question. What of the research problem? So the other questions, why, how and when, for which there is no answer in the descriptive research. Next one, exploratory research. Exploratory research means conducting research on unknown problem or a problem for which there is no past data or historical data. So it is initial research that is called exploratory research. In the exploratory research, the researcher has to identify a problem and he has to undertake the research work for in-depth study on the basis of existing data. So the data is already available. On the basis of the existing data, exploratory research is conducted. Next one, regarding experimental research. So the, what's the main aim of experimental research? To find the cause and the effect relationship of the variables. So the simple point, experimental research is nothing but finding out the cause and the effect relationship of any given problem. So these are the three types of research design. Next one, what is a scaling technique? It is a statistical tool. It is adopted to find the relationship of the objects or the relationship of the variables. This is meaning one meaning for scaling technique. The second meaning for scaling. Scaling is also called a procedure for measuring and assigning the objects to numbers. So the objects are assigned to numbers according to the specified rules or according to the set rules that is called scaling technique. There are four pillars in scaling technique. The first one is called order. The second one, description. The third one, distance. And the last one, origin. So these are the four pillars for using scaling technique. So simply speaking, scaling technique is a statistical tool adopted to bring relationship between variables. Next one. What are different types of scaling techniques? First one is called nominal scaling technique. Nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio. These are the four types. First one, nominal. The word nominal is derived from Latin term, nominis. What is nominis? It means pertaining to person or relating to a particular category that is called nominal. So nominal sampling technique is utilized to give rank or orders on the, according to the persons or according to the category. One example I can say gender. What is the category? Male, female category. Another category regarding Social status, what we can give, poor, middle class, rich, and likewise we can do. So this is called nominal scaling technique. It may be arranged either in descending order or ascending order. For example, ascending order. What is ascending order? Poor, average, good, excellent, the ascending. 
Defending order, excellent, good, average, poor. This is called nominal scaling technique. It is pertaining to person. For what? For another example, I can say religion. Religion person, Hindu, Islam, Muslim. This is another example for conducting nominal scaling technique. So two examples I can say. One is gender, male, female. Another one is religion. We can take these two examples for a nominal scaling technique. Second one, ordinal. Ordinal scaling technique. What is ordinal order? Simple meaning order. Order refers to classification on the basis of rank. First rank, second rank, that's called order. Example, school final examination, first rank, second rank, and so on. We can give rank. Social status, we can give rank. Poor, middle class, rich people, we can give social status. So this is called ordinal or order. So order, first, second, third, that's called order. Ranking. Next one. Interval, interval scaling technique. That interval is equal. For example, uh, temperature. If you see thermometer, temper 10 degree difference. 90, 100, 110. So what's the main object to classify the variable with equal intervals? One example, temperature. Second example, intelligent quotient. So two examples we can cite for interval scaling technique and the last one ratio so regarding ratio it refers to two aspects we have to compare for example comparing the age and the height so example comparing the ratio between age of the husband and height age of the father and height of the son age of wife or age of mother and weight of son so examples age height, weight, and so on. So these are the four different sampling techniques. Nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio. Next one. What is factor analysis? It simply describes the variability of a given observed data or correlated data. One meaning. Another simple meaning. Factor analysis is a procedure for reducing large number of objects into a fewer factors. Reducing large number of variables into a fewer factors. This is called factor analysis. Next question. What is Likert? Technique, L-I-K-E-R-T, Likert. Likert, it is a type of statistical tool. In this tool, we take five scales only. The maximum five scales. One example we can cite. For a job, a study on job satisfaction. What are the five scales we can take? Like, are you satisfied with the job? Or we can ask question. You are not satisfied with the job. We agree. Strongly agree, disagree, strongly disagree, no command. So this is called Likert scaling method. This is the most scientific method and it gives a valid and strong conclusion because it consists only of five point scale. Example, agree, strongly agree, disagree, strongly disagree, no commands. So these are the various questions regarding unit 2. So I have completed the second unit. See you in the next video with other university questions and answers. Till then, goodbye.